Bonjour, Dan. Vous êtes le, le directeur général de cette euh, industrie de, du poisson. Donc, euh, quel est votre rôle exactement? So, Dan, you're the uh, manager of this uh, fish processing plant. So, what's your role exactly here? Well, as you say, I'm the manager of the plant, and our role mainly is to make sure that it functions well and trying to make a profit, um, trying to provide employment for as many people as we can here in the community. That's one of the major roles for the plant. Uh, and that's basically what we're trying to do. You're doing two fish species, Arctic char and, uh, and Greenland halibut. Those are the two we do. Uh, Greenland halibut makes up about 90% of our sales and Arctic char 10% of our sales. So um, we, we try to maximize the, the, the revenues and the, and, the, and the hopefully profits from those two fish to provide employment and, and make a profit. Alors, Don, vous procédez euh, principalement à deux espèces, donc le turbo du Groenland et euh, donc l'onde de l'Arctique. Alors, comment fonctionne un plan euh, comme celui-ci? So, you process two uh, main species. So, how does uh, this plant work exactly? And uh, what about the, the, uh, the, the quantity of the fishes that process here? Okay, quantity of fish. We get our fish from five different sources. Char we get through the ice in the winter time, probably by about 30, 30, 40,000 pounds of fish through the ice. They drill a hole in the ice and bring us the fish almost every day or every second day. We get char again at this time of the year for about three weeks. It'll last three or four weeks through the salt water because char are like salmon. They come down to the salt water in the summer months. And then we get turbot more or less the same way. We get them through the ice in the winter time for about three months when the ice is good. And then we get them again here in the summer, which will start up in about a month, mid-August roughly. We'll start to get fresh fish in here from two or three boats that we'll have here. Then we also get a supply of turbot from what we call the offshore vessels, the big factory freezer boats who fish outside. They'll bring us some fish here for processing, mainly in the winter months. They bring it in frozen so it'll keep and we'll process it in the winter months when we don't have a good supply of fish. So we're trying to be a year-round plant, but there's still a couple of gaps that we're hoping to fill in. And in fact, we're looking at seal actually right now to see if we can do something with seal meat and seal furs. Uh, but that, that won't start till next year if it starts. So that's basically what the plant does. And as I said, we, most of our fish is bought from these local fishermen right here, these boats you see down in the harbor or in the winter time from their skidoos and sleds that they use out on the ice. But we do buy a um, reasonable supply of fish, probably about 40 to 80 tons every year from an offshore vessel who they freeze it at sea, bring it to us in about October, and we'll put it in our freezers here and then work on it all during the winter. And we ship, almost all our fish is shipped out by air, mostly to Montreal, where our broker picks it up and ships it either to Most of the turbot is going to Asia, Taiwan, China, Japan. Most of the char goes into local markets in Ontario, Quebec, and into the U.S. market. So that's basically where our, our markets are. And we do have excellent markets. Our, probably, if anything, our main shortage in anything is labor. We, we could use more labor here and to, to process more fish. But we do try to buy everything, we, everything the fishermen can catch us. And process it and that usually we can handle it. The offshore fish, they say, that's where we'll, we'll play with the number a little bit. We'll look at what we've got and what we have and how much work we want and we'll tell them what to bring us. And so that's why I say 40 to 80 tons we'll get in here in October. That will keep us busy until February, March. And so that's basically how our year runs. Alors, Don, il euh, y a de la pêche commerciale, de la pêche euh, sportive, donc des deux espèces. Quelle est l'importance pour l'économie euh, locale ici, donc du plan, et euh, d'un point de vue social, quelle est l'importance? So, you have a commercial fishing and you have uh, sportive fishing or personal fishing, but uh, having said this, what is the important, socially speaking and economically speaking, for the local communities? Oh, it's, it's very important, and not just for this community. Uh, we, for example, have started buying char from other communities. We bought 
about $70,000 worth of char from Kikatarjuak this winter. And that's a little community of about, what, 900 people. So you can imagine the impact of $70,000 coming into the community. In this community, we're spending about, probably about four or $500,000 for fish to the local fishermen, and another $300,000 for labor for local employees, because all our employees are local except for myself and a production manager. That's the only ones who aren't local. So it's a huge impact, even on this community with what, 12, 1300 population, that's a big payroll going in. And the beauty of our operation is all the money that comes to pay those fishermen and employees is coming from outside of Canada. It's, we're exporting most of it. We sell some in Ontario in Nikalawit, but most of it's sold in Asia and the US. So that's all money that's coming in from outside the country. So I think that's, that's to me, is better than money coming in from the government and just recirculating. So I think we do have a huge impact on the economy of this area. We, in fact, of Pangerton, we're very important. I think we're important for Nunavut too. We pay a lot of money to Nunavut in taxes, in Nunavut tax, in payroll taxes. Uh, there's a lot of money goes to the, both the government of Nunavut and the government of Canada. And as I say, this is all money that's coming from outside the country. It's not, it's not money that's being recirculated, it's new money coming in, which I think is more valuable than recirculated money. Mm -hmm. uh, effectivement, donc c'est très important d'un point de vue économique. C'est de l'argent qui vient de l'extérieur. Et uh, donc, uh, en, en termes d'utilisation de la ressource de façon générale, Euh, comment comment voyez-vous le futur en termes de ressources et puis en termes de développement socio-économique? So, um, yes, very important economically speaking. This money coming from outside is, is very important. So, now how do you see the future? I mean, in terms of the resource uh, itself, resource use, and the impact again on the socio social aspect, economical aspect. So, what about the future? How do you see this? Okay, as far as the future of Pang Fisheries, personally, I think it's very good. I think we've got a good future ahead of us for two or three reasons. One is we have a strong stock out here of both Greenland halibut and Arctic char, and that's because the government of Canada, who is mainly responsible for the resource, is being very cautious about how they're letting it be fished because of the, the, the lessons of the past, of course. We all know some of the issues where they allowed overfishing or for one reason or another there was overfishing. But up here they're not allowing that. They're doing a, quite a bit of science work up here, which we're all paying for. We put in probably $50,000 a year easy as our share for some of the science work that's being done. Um, so the, they're, they're watching the stock, they're being very cautious. They turn those stocks generally over to a group in Nunavut called the Nunavut Wildlife Management Board who then take and subdivide them into groups like Pangerton and whoever for for uh, allocation to the individual fishermen. In fact, I think you saw that operation of how they allocate the char stocks, and they do the similar thing with turbot. So I feel very confident that this, the resource is strong and good and that we have no fears. In fact, we're growing. The stock is growing. On the marketing side, I have no problems there. We have, I won't say unlimited market for Greenland halibut, but we could certainly double and triple the volume that we're handling right now. Char is not quite as strong a market, but char is, a, is very important today for the white tablecloth restaurants and, and because it's a naturally caught fish. It's not farm fish and it's, there's no additives, no coloring. So we're doing very well with that and we can do better if we could get more supply. The, we're in the middle, the processing plant is in the middle of those two things and that's where I think we could do a little bit better. We've got to do better, mainly with more employees, uh, training employees better and hopefully holding employees longer. That's one of our problems is we lose them, we train them and then lose them often. And salaries is one of it. We, we can only pay what the market will bear for we sell outside in the south or in Asia and we can't pay unlimited prices for wages. So we're competing probably not very well with government wages here in the community, but we're doing it and we're, we're getting by, but it's, we could be a lot more efficient in this plant if we could get more labor. We're, that's one of the reasons our costs are higher than they need to be. So that's the only probably the only area that we need to try to do better on and we're working on it, but it, I can tell you it isn't easy. Dan, en terminant, euh, donc l'ombre de l'Arctique compte pour environ 10 % de, de la production du plan. 
Euh, Est-ce que vous pensez que, que d'augmenter la, 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 la récolte de l'onde d'Arctique est quelque chose d'important pour la communauté ici? So you talked about the Arctic chair as being uh, 10% of the processing plan here. So uh, what would be the impact on the local community? And I'm talking about traditional knowledge and relating with science, of course, you know, and talking about the resource. But what do, you, do you think that uh, in raising the, uh, the uh, quantity of uh, Arctic char here in the, in the harvest uh, would be something important for the local community? Oh, absolutely, because one advantage we have as a processing plant, when we buy char, we're helping the fishermen, who's putting money in the community, but we're also hiring an employee for every one of those fishermen, or more than one for every fisherman. So we benefit the community in two ways as a processing plant. We, we benefit by the money we pay the fishermen and the money we pay the employees. There's no other fish uh, uh, fishery that does that in the north. Most of the other fish that's caught off of Nunavut waters is all taken to Newfoundland mostly and is marketed out through there or processed there. We're doing it right here and that's that's why I think we provide more benefit to Nunavut for any fish that we handle than anyone can because we get two people hired. We get the fisherman and the employee. That's to me is tremendous and it's a uh, it's a uh, It's a type of employment, both on the fishing side and even in the plant, that's fairly close to the traditional things that they would do, like harvesting, working on the land and things like that. So it, it's not like coming in here with a huge manufacturing company and trying to get people to suddenly start making plastic toys or something. This is something that they're comfortable with and can relate to because it's their own fish coming from, from their own people. And, and it's their own people processing it. So that's why I think that's so important, both financially and economically, but and culturally. It, it fits. It works well in the community. So, Don, uh, merci beaucoup pour uh, cette entrevue. Don, thank you very much for this interview. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much.